at our discussion for the SRE 2400 and 2410. So now basically I have to discuss two things for with you before I come to the discussion of these particular standards. Discussion number one, okay, what is the difference between an audit and a review? And second, what is the difference and what are the similarities between 2400 and 2410? Right. So that is what we will first discuss and then get into our discussion for the SRE 2400 and 2410. Right. Audit and review. Right. Audit review. So when you do an audit, you follow the standards on auditing. When you do a review, you need to follow the standards on review engagement. Right. In the audit, the auditor obtains a reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whereas in the review the ca the auditor obtains a limited assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement so in an audit reasonable assurance in a review limited assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement reasonable assurance the standard say has to be given in the form of a positive assurance we say financial statements give a true and fair view whereas sre says that review limited assurance has to be given in the form of a negative assurance we say nothing has come to our attention Nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. Nothing has come to our attention that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. Means what? They give a true and fair view. Minus, minus, plus. But why you are saying it negatively? Because it's a limited assurance. Limited assurance always has to be given in the form of a negative assurance. Right. And what is the wording? Nothing has come to our attention. That causes us to believe that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view. That means what? They give true and fair. But you say it negatively, not positively. Okay. Then obviously in audit we are giving a reasonable assurance. In a review we are giving the limited assurance. So obviously audit is going to be audit is going to be more in scope as compared to a review whereas review is going to be less in scope as compared to an audit very simple yeah audit there are 38 standards whereas for review you only have the two standards on the review engagement so audit is supposed to be more in scope as compared to a review right so audit more in scope whereas review would be less in scope okay right in audit what opinion we give is called as the audit opinion you know we call it as the opinion of the auditor whereas in a review with this the opinion but here we say it is our review conclusion it is our review conclusion in audit there are mainly the in an audit there are mainly the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence i c a i o r r whereas in the review primarily the procedures performed by the auditor are inquiry and analytical procedures mainly the procedures performed are inquiry and analytical procedures Okay, right. Now, whether I am doing an audit or I am doing a review, do I need to comply with the ethical requirements including independence? Yes. Should there be quality control in the firm? Yes. There has to be the quality control in the firm. That is common. But in an audit, seven methods of obtaining audit evidence. In a review, there are mainly the two methods, inquiry and analytical procedures, right? Inquiry and the analytical procedures. Audit and review, both are post-mortem activities. Both are performed for the historical financial information. It is performed for the historical financial statements. So say, I go to Geo Limited example. And now this Geo Limited example, they have prepared their financial statements for 31st March 2022. Example. And they are saying, CA, please check. CA says, I have two options. Yeah, historical, post-mortem. 
है ना पास्ट ट्रांजेक्शन इन इवेंट सी एस आई हैव टू ऑप्शन फॉर चेकिंग आई कैन डू एन ऑडिट फॉर यू और आई कैन डू अ रिव्यू फॉर यू इफ आई डू एन ऑडिट आई कैन गिव यू रीजनेबल अश्योरेंस इफ आई डू अ रिव्यू आई कैन गिव यू दी लिमिटेड अश्योरेंस ऑडिट विल टेक ट्वेंटी डेज रिव्यू आई कैन फिनिश इन अ वीक्स टाइम इफ आई डू एन ऑडिट द फी विल बी ट्वेंटी लैख इफ वी डू अ रिव्यू द फी विल बी फाइव लैख सो क्लाइंट यू मिस दीज आर द ऑप्शन है ना दीज आर दी ऑप्शन so then client says no no see it too costly so then you better get a review you want a review done now but if the requirement of law is to get an audit done and getting a review done then that is not right and now for listed entities sebi says that quarterly they need to declare their audited results or their reviewed results so then both are allowed by law but law says audit is to be done but you getting a review done then it would not be proper right then it would not be proper Right? So then, client has to decide. Many clients, what they do, you know, quarterly they get a review done. Like June, September, December, they go for a review, and for March, year end, they go for a audit. Right? Yeah, no? So quarterly LR. You might have heard this term LR. What is LR? Limited review. And yearly audit. Or they can go for quarterly audits also. Or many clients, what they do. A review takes less time. So what happens? Year gets over on thirty first March. By twentieth April, they first declare their review results. and then audit gets over over a period of time and then say by 15th of june or so they declare their audited results even that is possible right so they can get both done they can get any one done but they have to keep in require mind the requirement of the law regulation right so you know when we talk about our audit process there also we talk about the concept of dsr what is dsr direction supervision and review this Review is work of a less experienced team member is reviewed by a more experienced team member. Okay, whatever work is done by the article by the team senior, the manager, the partner checks that work. That is this review. Then peer review, I C A I sends the C A to your firm to check the quality of services. Quality review, the quality review board does the checking of the quality of services of your firm. these engagement quality control review as per sqc 1 these reviews are different these are procedural reviews here it is review as an engagement you know so don't get it confused with you know a normal ma'am a work is being reviewed by a senior that review we are not talking about we are talking about review of financial statements we are talking about audit of financial statements okay review done on full financial statements or part right so generally review is done on the entire financial statements and right? the review is done on the entire financial statements and in case if it is to be done on the part then you have to compile or combine sre with the sa ka you know as required you need to adapt okay but as such it is done on the entire financial statements okay right so everybody do you understand the distinguish between audit and review all of you do you understand the difference between an audit and a review yes all of you okay now there are two standards on review engagement you have sre 2400 and you have sre 2410 sre 2400 what does it say engagement to review the historical financial statements right historical financial statements and sre 2410 it is review of interim financial information performed by an independent auditor of the entity can anybody identify any difference in these two one is a small heading other is a big heading but apart from that engagements to review historical financial statement and review of interim financial information performed by an independent auditor of the entity that means in the case of sre what that means in the case of sre 2400 yes the person doing the audit and the person doing the review are alag alag different different audit is being done by pwc review is being done by kpmg whereas in 2410 the person doing audit and review are same 
है ना ऑडिट इज बिंग डन बाय पी डब्ल्यू सी एंड रिव्यू इज ऑल्सो बिंग डन बाय पी डब्ल्यू सी ओके सो दैट इज वाई टू फोर जीरो जीरो दैट अंकल दैट अंकल वी विल हैव टू कॉल हिम एज दी प्रैक्टिशनर है ना यू डू इट पर्सन डूइंग ऑडिट इज ऑडिटर पर्सन डूइंग रिव्यू इज नॉट रिव्यूअर पर्सन डूइंग रिव्यू इज प्रैक्टिशनर but here it is the auditor who is doing the review so here the uncle we can call him as the auditor then sre 2400 is talking about historical financial statements so you can generally take it for a complete financial year whereas here it is specifically talking about the interim financial information so that is specifically talking about your june september december quarter इंटेरियम फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन परफॉर्म बाय एन इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिटर ऑफ दी एंटिटी आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट एवरी वन सो एस आर ई टू फोर जीरो जीरो एंगेजमेंट टू रिव्यू हिस्टोरिकल फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट टू फोर वन जीरो रिव्यू ऑफ इंटेरियम फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन परफॉर्म बाय एन इंडिपेंडेंट ऑडिटर ऑफ दी एंटिटी पर्सन हु इज डूइंग ऑडिट सेम अंकल डूइंग रिव्यू एंड यूर person doing audit person doing review are different are you understanding that okay so here we have to call him as the practitioner and your auditor so it says a ca has an, an, the auditor of the company has been appointed to review the financial statements then you have to go to 2410 they say a ca has been appointed to do the review then you have to come to 2400 right and then this is historical financial statements and then this is the interim financial information relatively as what you say sre 2400 was an old standard which has been revised whereas sre 2410 is a relatively that's pretty old now but relatively a new standard earlier institute had only one standard 2400 later on they came up with one more standard 2410 Right, two four one zero. Okay, and what are the two procedures that the CA can use in case of a review engagement? Can I use all my seven colors? I C A I O R R. Can I use all my seven colors when I am doing a review? No. What are the two colors mainly which you make use of? Mainly the colors used are the which methods are used? Inquiry and analytical procedures correct inquiry and analytical procedures yeah, this is what you have to remember as the thumb rule then what you have to remember what type of an assurance is being given by the ca limited assurance how is limited assurance given it is given in the form of a negative assurance you say nothing has come to our attention that the financial statements do not give a true and fair view or they are not prepared in accordance with the afrs right do you get these two discussions which i wanted to have with you one what is the difference between an audit and a review and second what is the difference between the sre 24 Zero zero and S R E two four one zero. Right again, what we are going to discuss in these two standards is A P R. What is A P R? Acceptance, planning, performing, and reporting. Right. What we are going to discuss in these two standards again is the right the acceptance, then the planning, performing, and then the reporting. Right. So that's our discussion on the S R S A eight one zero. Which was for the summary financial statements. Then you have a small chapter number nine, which we shall do it later, which is for the uh, related services. And then after the related services, chapter number ten, which you have, it is regarding the review, right? So S R E two four zero zero, and then you have the S R E two four one zero. Okay, right? So let's quickly yes see these particular standards. Okay. Right. Let me just keep the content ready. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Your two four zero zero. Okay. Right. So now let's talk about the S R E two four zero zero. Right. So one. What does it say? Review is a limited assurance engagement. Right. So you what do you say? You reduce the engagement rim. It's greater than the reasonable assurance, right? So you are not giving the reasonable assurance, but you are giving only the 
is limited assurance, right? So again, it says lower level of assurance than an audit and review is related to financial statements, just like you do an audit of the historical financial information. And for a review, what are those two standards? SRE 2400 and 2410. Engagements to review historical financial statements and review of interim financial information performed by an independent auditor of the entity. And is SQC applicable to review? Yeah, yeah. SQC is mother standard whether SA, SRE, SAE, SRS, whatever you do, you have to maintain the quality. Okay, with that coming to SRE 2400, engagements to review historical financial statement. What does it talk about? The practitioner. Oh my god, why are they calling this fellow practitioner? Why not calling him auditor? Hmm? The practitioner practitioner's responsibility when engaged to perform a review of historical financial statement and the form and content of the practitioner's report. Yo, they are not saying auditor's report. They are saying not saying review report also. They are saying practitioner's report. Why? Because the person who is doing the audit has not been appointed to do the review. It is another CA who is appointed. Okay. Right. And again, enhance the degree of the confidence of the intended users and again obtain the limited assurance right so the limited assurance and mainly the procedures performed are inquiry and analytical procedures and then it says if you become aware of any matter that causes the practitioner to believe that financial statements mmm what is mmm you know mm materially misstated you know rmm also no risk of material misstatement now here what they talk about is mmm may be materially misstated no no may be materially misstated then he needs to perform the additional procedures right then he needs to perform the additional procedures and 2400 when the review is being done by a practitioner who is not the auditor Right. What are the objectives to obtain limited assurance mainly by performing inquiry analytical that financial statements are free from material misstatement thereby enabling the practitioner to express a conclusion not opinion. I told you now audit opinion review conclusion right to express a conclusion that whether anything has come to their attention that they are not prepared. So you say nothing has come to our attention that they are not prepared and then give a report. And if CA thinks that this company, this entity, they should have got an audit done. But because they are very miserly, they don't want to spend the money. That is why they are getting a review done. CA says bye-bye. I will not do the review. Right? In cases of limited assurance cannot be obtained and a modified conclusion is insufficient. The SRE requires the practitioner to disclaim or withdraw from the engagement. Right. Even in case of review engagement, does the CA need to comply with ethical requirements? Yes. Does he need to comply with the requirement of independence? Yes. And now, client is telling CA, you know, you say, you, ma'am, I get so many calls every day. Now, this client is calling and telling me, CA, we want you to come and do the review of our historical financial statements. CA says, okay, okay, you want me to do review? Wait, wait, wait. Can you immediately say, yeah, yeah, no problem. From tomorrow, I will come and we'll finish review one week. Mein fata fat. No, you have to consider the factors affecting the acceptance and continuance of client relationship and review engagement. The same factors for acceptance continuance we also have in SQC 1 and SA 220. Okay, any client tells you, you know, okay, CA, please do the audit of our company. You can't immediately take your laptop bag and go and sit in front of the client and say, okay, client, call coffee and then I'll start with the work. No. You have to do your background check. You have to first consciously think that whether I should accept this engagement or not. Right? So acceptance continuance of the client relationship. Right? So that is point number one. So again, candidate number one for question in your exam. Acceptance continuance of the review engagement. Right. So practitioner says, I am not satisfied. It says don't accept the engagement, not to accept the engagement. When the practitioner is not satisfied, okay, there is a rational purpose for getting a review done. Or that the review engagement would be appropriate in the circumstances. They say you need to get an audit done. Like, you know, doctor tells the patient, no, only doing angioplasty will not be enough. We will have to do a bypass for you. 
No, but patient is saying, no, no, only do angioplasty because that is less costly than a bypass. They say, but this is not appropriate. You have these three blocks and all three are 90%. It will be very risky doing an angioplasty. And one block of 60-70% or two blocks or something, they say we can do the angioplasty. But look at your condition, so critical. We have to do a, what you say, audit. We have to do the bypass over there. Okay, so it then he says, no, no, you know, I will not accept this review engagement. The practitioner says, if I am not satisfied, not satisfied regarding what? Okay, it makes no sense for you to get a review done. There is no rational purpose. And review is not uchit. It is not appropriate in the circumstances. You guys need an audit done. Why you're getting review done? Right? So it is not appropriate. Okay. Then practitioner says, oh, I think when I do the review of your company entity, I will not be able to comply with ERII. I think that all the information which is required for the review will not be available. If information will not be available, that means I think that management might impose a limitation on scope. And CA says, practitioner says, I have doubts regarding the integrity of the management. And you know, these people are, you know, what you say, very corrupted people, you know, very money laundering, criminal activity type of people. CA says, no, no, these type of people, I don't want to accept the engagement. Right. So what are these? These are the pre, what you say, these are the considerations for acceptance and continuance of the client relationship, right? And the review engagement. What are the considerations? It says you should not accept the engagement if you are not satisfied that there is a rational purpose and review would be appropriate. Second, you say there is a purpose, it would be appropriate, but I don't think I'll be able to comply with the ERII. But I or I think that all the information will not be available, there will be a limitation on scope. Or I have the concerns regarding the integrity of the management. It says no accepting the engagement. Then. Once you decide, oh, there is a rational purpose, it is appropriate, I can comply with the ethical requirement, there will be information provided, there will be no limitation on scope, then it says CA accept. But now when you accept, there are the preconditions. What are the preconditions? It's acceptability of the AFRF, same giant precondition. Then preparation of financial statements and internal control, whose responsibility? Management, your responsibility to provide CA with all information, additional information and unrestricted access. Whose responsibility? Management, your responsibility. Same to same what we discussed in SA21 below. And a precondition, acceptability of AFRF and plus five. Right? And plus five. Right? So what does it say? Whether the AFRF is acceptable preparation of financial statements, internal control, and then to provide practitioner with all information, additional information, and unrestricted access. Now, if without having an understanding of the gist of this, when you try to read this particular page, then it looks like, oh, so much of time and so much of effort is required. But, you know, in case if we analyze, if you are able to correlate it with the preconditions for an audit, which we discussed in SA210, then quick reading can be done. And okay, nothing but 1 plus 5 of SA210. Okay, right? So, preconditions for accepting the engagement. And if the practitioner is not satisfied that the preconditions as discussed above will not be fulfilled, right? Then what the practitioner should do? He should not accept the engagement, right? So, if there is a limitation on scope imposed prior to acceptance, not to accept. After acceptance of engagement and not satisfied that the above preconditions will be fulfilled, then what to do? Discuss how the matter has been resolved. Whether it would be appropriate to continue with the engagement and how the matter will be put in the report. Right? How the matter will be put in the report. So look at the flow of the standard. First starting with the acceptance continuance of the client. Then after that, the preconditions for accepting the review engagement. Then after the preconditions, now it says engagement letter. Now that your preconditions are accepted, now you issue an engagement letter. If it's a recurring review, you need to check whether your engagement letter needs to be revised. If there is a change in the terms of engagement, so you need to check is there a reasonable justification to do so. Right? Is there a reasonable justification to do so? Right? So, if I try to prepare a summary of SRE 2400, it starts with the acceptance and 
continuance of the client relationship and the review engagement. Then we talk about the preconditions, which is your one plus five. Then we talk about the engagement letter, you know, agreeing the terms of the engagement. And now we come to the review procedures. Right now we shall talk about the review procedures. Right. So now what are the review procedures over here? Now, instead of doing an audit, you have been appointed to do a review. Do you need to determine materiality? Yes. Will you have to understand the entity and its environment? Yes. Now, procedure, will you perform IC, AI, ORR? No. The procedures which you will perform mainly are inquiry and analytical procedures. And then you need to perform procedures for specific circumstances and other procedures if necessary. Right, so one, two, three, four, five. These five points we need to discuss next. Okay, you need to determine materiality. Then you need to understand the entity, do inquiry, analytical, additional procedures and the other procedures. Right, additional and the other procedures. Right, so it says even when you're doing a review, do you need to determine materiality? Yes. Later on, as you continue, you know, doing your review, can you revise the amount of materiality? Yes. Do you need to obtain understanding of the entity? Yes. And now coming to the main question over there, that is inquiry and analytical procedures. Okay. One more point which I can add in the distinction over here. In audit, in an audit, the evidence which we obtained is called in an audit, the evidence which we obtained is called as four alphabets. Yes, it is called as S-A-A-E, that is sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Whereas in the review, the evidence that we obtain is called as sufficient appropriate evidence. There is no concept called as sufficient appropriate review evidence. No. Then you only call it as sufficient appropriate evidence. Whereas in an audit, you call it as the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Right? So that's why you see over here what they have said, sufficient appropriate evidence. Right? Sufficient appropriate evidence. So the practitioner will design the inquiry and analytical procedures to address all material items and to focus on addressing the areas where the financial statements are likely to be materially misstated. Right? So in an audit, what do we say? Risk of material misstatement. In a review, what do we say? Likelihood of material misstatement. Likely to be materially misstated. And the likely to be materially misstated. In an audit, we say risk of material misstatement. Right? So, in a review, what you want to do? Obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. For that, you need to check where all the financial statements are likely to be materially misstated. And the procedures performed by you are primarily going to be what? Inquiry and analytical procedures. Right? Inquiry and analytical procedures. So, inquiry is what? Just having the discussion. And analytical is what? Compared with previous year, compared with budget, compare quarter on quarter, month on month, year on year. That is analytical procedure. But now say I have to do the review of the historical financial statements and there is one important contract that the company has entered into. Now, how much I will inquire about the contract now? Achha, 50 page contract. Can you tell me everything that is written in the contract? They say, Arre, rather than I telling you, you know, 50 pages of what is written, you read it on your own. No. You say, no, really, I would have read it. But you know, I have only two colors with me. No, I only have inquiry and analytical. If I start reading the contract, what I will do? I will end up doing the inspection. You know, if I start reading the contract, what will I end up doing? I'll end up doing the inspection. So it says sometimes on an exception basis, is it okay even if you perform some other audit procedures also? Yes. But now, so then what I did, I read the contract. That means I have done the inspection. So then they say, oh, CA, now in addition to inquiry, analytical, you perform other procedures. So now this has become an audit. No, it still continues to be review only. Just because CA read some contract, you cannot say, no, no, CA, now you've started audit. No. 
still it does not alter the objective of the review engagement. So mainly we are going to focus on inquiry analytical. But sometimes, what does it say? You may have to perform the other procedures. Like sometimes you may have to read a contract. But if you perform these other procedures, does not alter the objective of obtaining reasonable assurance. And okay, just now that you did inspection, so you say, no, no, now it's no longer limited assurance. No, it still continues to be the limited assurance engagement. And it says the CMA also review the accounting records to identify unusual transactions. So that means again, CA is doing the inspection. Right? So mainly what you should do? Inquiry analytical. But if on requirement basis, you perform some other procedures, does that change your objective of the review engagement? No. It does not change your objective. Okay. And now it talks about inquiry and analytical procedures. Right. It says what are the two procedures that you perform is inquiry and analytical. Okay. So inquiry. You are having the discussion. Right. With the people in the organization. What all will you make an inquiry about? Point number one, you will inquire about the accounting estimate. So that is 540. You will discuss the matter regarding the identification of related parties. That is point number two. Right? Then you will also discuss about the complex unusual transaction. Point number three, you will also discuss about the existence of actual suspected or alleged fraud. That is point number four. You will also discuss about events occurring between date of financial statements and practitioner's report. That is nothing but your subsequent events, SA 560. You will also check for the basis for the management's assessment of entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Then events or conditions that cast a doubt on the ability to continue as a going concern. And material commitment, contractual obligation and contingencies that had affected the financial statements. Right. So these are the matters you will inquire about. What is matter number one? You will inquire about the estimates. Two, you will inquire about the how they identify related parties. Three, how they identify complex unusual transaction. Then the actual suspected or the alleged fraud. So that is your SA 240. Right? Then after that, it talks about the subsequent events. Then going concern, events or condition and the material commitment contractual obligations or so. Then it says this inquiry, you can make of financial data, but you can also make it of the non-financial data, right? So one, you make inquiry of these eight matters. Next, you can make inquiry of the non-financial data. Third, it says you can also make inquiries regarding the actions taken at the meeting. See, generally what I will tell client, give me the minutes of the meeting, I will inspect. But here can I inspect? No. So what I do? I inquire about the actions taken at the meeting. I inquire about the communications received from the regulatory agency. I inquire about the matters arising in the course of applying the other procedures. Right? So these are the other inquiries. Right? So what other inquiries you could make about? Actions taken at the meeting, any communication from regulatory agency and any other matter. And based on the response of the management, you can also do the further inquiry, right? So in your exam, on this one point of inquiry, can there be a retail question? Yes. Right? Can there be a retail question? Yes. Okay, when you're doing inquiry as a part of your review procedures, what all do you inquire about? So one, you inquire about these eight matters. Then after these eight matters, you also inquire the non-financial data. Then you also inquire about the actions taken, regulatory agency and the other matters. Then it says based on the responses to the inquiry, you can make the further inquiry. Okay. And in addition to inquiry, what is the second procedure? It is analytical procedure. So you use the data which is there in the system and you put the accounting state financial statements and you do the analytical procedures. Okay. So this is what inquiry you do? What analytical you do? Now, next question is, why do you do inquiry analytical? Why? There were seven, no? Inspection, confirmation, analytical, inquiry, observation, recalculation, re-performance. But why these two only won the election? You know, like Modi and Yogi, why these two only? Inquiry, analytical procedures. Why these two only won the election? Why these two were selected for doing the review engagement? Why these two were, you know, selected for the review engagement? One, 
inquiry if you want to know about the management's intent you always need to make inquiry and if you want to read somebody's mind you know you have to analyze what is going on in their mind for that you have to inquire somebody i mean you cannot read or get a confirmation or something right so you have to do the inquiry when you want to know about the management's intent and management's intent what does it say other evidence for management's intent may be limited right now whether management walks their talk last year also they said oh next year we are going to change our accounting policy you see it last 10 years they are saying we'll change our accounting policy but they never change so you know their past history of carrying out the stated intention okay whether they walk their talk or they say big big things they do nothing so that intent of the management of executing their plans also that also you come to know on the basis of the inquiry right then application of professional skepticism in evaluating the responses is also required so one you require inquiry to check for the management's intent second you require to do inquiry to identify where all there is a possibility of lmm and the likelihood of the material misstatement Right, so these are first two points why the inquiry is done, and next point over there, okay, why analytical procedures are possible. Right, so one question, why inquiry to help you check management's intent and to identify likely of material misstatement, and now why analytical procedure? It helps you to identify again where there is an element likelihood of material misstatement. Then wherever there are inconsistencies, okay, last year traveling expense seventy lakh, this year eight crore. right so it helps you to identify the inconsistencies then it also helps you to find the corroborative evidence corroborative additional evidence supportive evidence and based on that you perform the additional procedures right so again a very important question why inquiry analytical procedures why inquiry management's intent and lmm why analytical procedures again lmm inconsistency corroborative and the additional procedures right and the additional procedures okay right then it talks about procedures to address specific circumstances so you know review is like a limited version of an audit it's like a mini version and you know, rather than doing an audit review is done so in review also will you check related parties yes will you check for fraud non compliance yes will you check for going concern of the entity yes so even that is covered in the review right so those are the yes in a review also may it happen that the branches are audited by branch the branches are reviewed by the branch practitioners or you have to use the work of an expert yes Right, so these are the next set of consideration. If you remember, at the beginning we had seen five points over here. What five points? Determining materiality, understanding the entity and its environment, inquiry, analytical procedure, additional procedures, and other procedures. See over here. Right, you know, materiality, understanding, inquiry, analytical, then specific circumstances, and other procedures if necessary. right so we discussed materiality then understanding then inquiry analytical right so what inquiry you do what analytical you do then why you do inquiry and why you do analytical then you come to the point number 4 okay what are the additional procedures right so you check for going concern right you check for the related parties you check for fraud non compliance with law regulation and so Okay, right. Now coming to the next one, additional procedures when practitioner becomes aware that financial statements may be MMM. What is MMM? What is MMM? That financial statements. See, first when you did your uh, understanding of the entity and its environment, you came to know where they are likely to be materially misstated. And now LMM, that is the A likelihood of the material misstatement that is risk of material misstatement based on that you performed your procedures and now you reach where you reach to mmm what is mmm may be materially misstated you say not sure but i think that these financial statements may be there may be some fraud and error so if think that they may be materially misstated it says ca now you need to perform the additional procedures right how much additional procedure should i perform how much additional checking should i perform it says till the time you don't reach to 
height till the time you don't reach to not likely to be materially misstated or materially misstated. So you're still floating in between whether I should do CA, whether I should not do CA, whether I should write group one, whether I should write group two. So you're still in that dilemma situation. It says keep on performing the further procedures till the time you reach to a conclusion that I am writing only, I'm not writing both groups together or I am writing both groups together. So at what stage you are? You are at a stage which says may be materially misstated. It says till, uh, when you are at may be materially misstated, keep on performing additional procedure till the time you don't reach to not likely to be materially misstated or materially misstated. Sometimes what happens after you perform these additional procedures, you are still at likely to be materially misstated. So it says if you are at likely to be materially misstated, further perform additional procedures till the time you don't reach A or B. You know, A or B is what? A is not likely to be materially misstated or B is materially misstated. Right? That is what, if you see it over here, that's what you will understand, right? So, if the practitioner becomes aware, that causes the practitioner to believe that the financial statements, MMM, may be materially misstated, he will perform additional procedures. How long? Till the time he reaches NLMM, not likely to be materially misstated, or he reaches MM, which is materially misstated. Now, what are these additional procedures he can do? He can do additional inquiry, additional analytical procedure or other types of procedure like test of detail, confirmation. And like there we started reading the contract inspection. Now, here you are going one step beyond. You are doing confirmation. But that does not change your objective of the review engagement. Right? So, what are the additional procedures? And how long do you perform these additional procedures till the time you reach to not likely to be materially misstated or materially misstated. That is A or B. And what is 3? You may still be hanging only. Okay, likely to be materially misstated. If you are still hanging with likely to be materially misstated, it says keep on performing additional procedures. And how long you perform the additional procedures? Till the time you don't reach to A or B above. Till the time you don't reach to A or B above. And you say okay, you are not able to reach to A or B above. So continue performing procedures till you reach A or B above. Or you say you are not able to conclude. Then what you do? Consider it to be a scope limitation and say that it is not possible to form an unmodified conclusion. Right? So, may look very, you know, what you say, probably confusing, but I have already analyzed it for you and told you that this is what they are telling you over there. Right? So, you say whether they are likely to be materially misstated, you do inquiry analytical, you come to note that there is a MMM, may be materially misstated. So, you perform additional procedures till the time you reach A, B or C. If A or B, finish, matter is over. But if you read C, that is still you are at LMM, likely to be materially misstated. It says keep performing additional procedures till you reach A or B. And if you cannot reach, then that's a scope limitation. Right? Then that's a scope limitation. Okay. Then written representation. Okay. What written representation the CA should take from the management when he is appointed to do a review? Now, generally what happens, no students say, oh, written representation, okay, let him take whatever. But these are the kind of questions that they are asking in the question bank. And then these are the type of questions. See, it's a very clear thought process that you have. The moment you look at a question and the thought comes to your mind, in hey, this type of question, they won't ask. I am telling you, take it in writing. Okay, that's the question which will come in the exam. What you think will come, that to anyways should come. But what you think, nah, hey, this type of question, CA final level, this type of procedural question that doesn't come, what they are just writing this. I am telling you, those are the ones which come in the exam. And the ICAI has a target of proving your predictions to be wrong. The moment you say this will not come, that has to sit in the exam hall. They did it in FR last time. Okay. Like they do it with one subject at least and it could spread on, you know, the like, uh, effect of that could spread on for all the subjects also. 
the most uncelebrated you think like you know i i just to give you an example like uh, without bias to any political you know any uh, nothing like that but like you know when rajasthan elections took place and they were contemplating that who will become the uh, chief minister over there and then you know that uh, political party leader had a chit in her hand and it was being awaited and then the full day the news channel they were you know this india tv and then all these uh, um, NDTV, they were analyzing that this person might become the uh, chief minister, this person, there was so much of analysis, not even a single media channel, even one time occur, uh, you know, uttered the name of, if anybody knows, follows politics, not even a single media referred even one time to the name of Bhajan Lal Sharma. Chit was opened, it was like a breaking news. Okay? Oh, so then the you know on WhatsApp the message which was going was like even Bhajan Lal Sharma would not be knowing that he is going to become the CM. Forget about anybody else. And it's like that's the way you know to give the baton in the hand of a new person, you know, a more promising candidate rather than an experienced candidate over there. So that I when I saw that particular, you know, uh, uh, reaction and the news channel, how they started immediately converting their points and so. So that's exactly I realized this is what ICI regularly does with the student, you know, that <laughs> everything that is not predicted comes and sits in the exam hall. Okay, right. So Simple logic. You just study everything and go in the exam hall. And don't take the trouble of analyzing or anything. Because see, in that also energy is getting utilized. And that risk factor is there. That fear factor is there. So study now. You'll become. And look at the good part of it, Ray. Only 50 marks are required. You say, ma'am, your English is not proper. How are you saying only 50? Honestly, see, the passing percentage is not 75 marks or 80 marks required. Only 50 are required. So 50 marks you don't get also, it is okay. Am I right or am I wrong? See, what I have to get to become a chartered accountant is 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 150, 150, 300 out of 600 and you become a DCA. Dot chartered accountant. Dot. No wastage of efforts. You say, ma'am, what if I get 70, 70, 80 and if I get 80, 80 and 70? No problem. No problem. I go. No problem at all. The more the barrier. This is economic order quantity. But you also have to keep a security margin over there. Right? So let's like, you know, keep it as 60, 60, 60. Because there is normal way, you know, loss in transit or so. And there is loss in transit and so. So many students thought, you know, okay, old syllabus. That is why institute will be more courteous in making the students uh, pass. And then, you know, you won't have to write in the news. So it was much anticipated that old course uh, results are going to be very great. You know, rather ICI is great. Okay, right. So it is better to answer all MCQs even in negative marking. Yeah, yeah. So MCQs, so you will become what you say, like uh, pundits, you know, you will become like, a, what I can tell you, tell you, like, you know, very competent in solving MCQs. Once you have absorbed the content of audit, you understand, I can just take you through the important words. But, you know, rather earlier it was said that MCQ has increased the, marks which you can get in the exam rather it's more easy it's not that way the way the mcqs earlier you know you could study uh, like whatever part of the syllabus and it was like okay if a question comes it comes for four marks or there is no question which comes about the same but now that one line somewhere written in the book like an old course now i always give this example in my class was sebi lodr ka chapter tha audit committee corporate governance it's a listed entities within 21 days from the end of the quarter they have to submit their cg report to the stock exchange this cg report corporate governance report has to be signed by a b c d it says chief executive officer and chief Exe uh, financial officer chief executive officer or chief financial officer chief executive officer and compliance officer co 
है ना कंप्लायंस ऑफिसर और चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर और कंप्लायंस ऑफिसर यू आर लाइक मैम आई हैड नो कंफ्यूजन इन माय लाइफ बिफोर दीज ऑप्शन केम आई वॉज वेरी श्योर you so you would have put that in front of me i would have said this is right but now when you put four options in front of me i start getting tempted you know like when you go to a shop and they put a red color shirt in front of you you say oh yes this red color shirt i like but then you say oh, we have blue color also in this we have green also we have yellow also now confusion starts are then you think oh actually yellow is also not bad oh actually black also is good okay it is like that you know है ना तो एनी वेज अभी हाफ ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स डोंट नो ऑन अर्थ के देर इज एन अंकल कॉल्ड कंप्लायंस ऑफिसर तो उनको तो लगता है ये तो गया है ना देन व्हाट दे से चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर चीफ फाइनेंशियल ऑफिसर एंड और और सो जनरली वी से सीईओ एंड सीएफओ ना सो वी डोंट से सीईओ और सीएफओ यू आर लॉजिकल थिंकिंग यार यू आर लाइक genius and then you say yeah yeah a is the option they think i don't know but here yeah, i am so intelligent i'm no, like just don't show off okay and then you count that you are you will get one mark over there the institute do you think it's that easy to deal with it no if students have studied it's so not out of general knowledge but out of technical knowledge if students have studied they know there is an uncle called over there as compliance officer so then it is not uncle one and two so now it is chief executive officer compliance officer now who on earth read ke and now you might have read it also but who specifically check ke between these two whether there is and or or again your heart says why to break anybody's heart you make it both chief executive officer and uncle compliance something now what the correct option is not even is that even in your radar and it's not even in your radar of thinking okay that's not the answer and the correct answer is the last one and it's the last one and now there are 30 days 45 days 60 days 90 days 180 days now you see man always knew that a company auditor resigns within 30 days of date of resignation he has to file form adt3 but then they ask question 30 days or 60 days or they ask a question saying 90 days or they say one month so you say ma'am after few days they start saying hours and seconds and minutes also so then you say no oh my god 30 days one month ma'am same only you know no what you are saying over here i am not saying and you know, that is what i see i'm telling you okay that's so what that's what i mean when you deep dive into the subject when you feel the texture of the subject then solving mcqs will be very effective for you okay anyways let's come back to our discussion over here right so mmm then nlmm mm or lmm if lmm keep keep you know performing the additional procedures till how long till the time you don't reach the a or b okay right then it says even in case of a review engagement ca uncle do you need to obtain written representation yes that management preparation of financial statements your responsibility to give the ca all information all transaction all this is the responsibility of the management if management has made a written public statement about their responsibility then the representation above need not include the written representation if the matters are covered in the public statement made by the management then those matters which are covered in the public statement they may not be covered in the written representation and what are the other representations that ca will require related parties so again that is 550 then you have the fraud that is 240 then compliance non compliance with law regulation 250 going concern then subsequent events 560 then material commitments material non monetary transaction all this is the responsibility of the management these eight points of inquiry you remember you remember we or we had seen eight points of inquiry hai right? na i had made a list over there of eight matters of which you make the inquiry those eight matters which are discussed over here more or less the same eight matters is what we are taking the written representation from the management right is what we are taking the written representation from the management okay wonderful
Yes, so written representations from the management. If management does not provide you the written representation, you discuss the matter, you will have doubts regarding the integrity and then you consider the effect on the practitioner's report. Okay, if disclaims a conclusion or withdraw from the engagement, then again you need to consider, right, possible responsibilities under law regulation or so. Okay, right, then evaluating evidence, okay, whether that SAE, sufficient appropriate evidence has been obtained. If it is not obtained or it is not sufficient appropriate, then what you do? Do additional procedures. Still, if you are not able to obtain the evidence, then what you need to do? Discuss the matter with the management TCWG. Right? An inability to perform a procedure will not constitute a limitation on co if the practitioner is able to obtain evidence by performing other procedure. That means you are not able to obtain the evidence by performing inquiry analytical. But if you do inspection, you will be able to get the evidence. So, you know, you say, no, no, in our review, I only do inquiry analytical. No, we said on need basis, you may also do the other procedures. And then you have to form the conclusion right so here it says whether they give a true and fair view or in case of the compliance framework are they prepared okay right and if you're giving a modified opinion so now your modified opinion is called as the modified conclusion so it could be qualified conclusion adverse conclusion or disclaimer of conclusion and then you also need to give the basis for qualified basis for adverse and basis for disclaimer conclude this disclaimer of conclusion Right, then you have the practitioner's report, title, addressee, introduction, responsibility. Right, then review engagement is a limited assurance engagement. Mainly the procedures are inquiry and analytical. Procedures are less in scope as compared to an audit and an audit opinion is not being expressed. An audit is not being performed and an audit opinion is not being expressed. And then you give your conclusion and then the signature place and date. In the review also, can there be emphasis of matter, other matter, other reporting responsibility? Yes. What documentation you need to keep in case of review engagement? This is the documentation. Again, this is a question which is there in the question bank. And a documentation for the review engagement. Okay, sufficient appropriate record. What were the procedures applied? What were the result of those procedures? And what was the significant matter? So what procedures you performed? What were the result of the procedures? And what were the significant matters? And it says you also need to document who performed the work, who reviewed the work. Also the discussions which you had with management and the inconsistency, how it was addressed. Right? Inconsistency, how it was addressed. Right? So even a documentation question for the review could be a question in your exam. Right? So what were the procedures? What were the result of the procedure? Significant matters. Then after that it says who did the work, who reviewed the work, discussions and how inconsistencies were addressed. And then towards the end of the standard they are talking about the difference between audit and review. Audit is reasonable assurance, review is limited assurance. Here it says you do TOC and substantive. Here it is mainly focused on inquiry and analytical. Your reasonable conclusion, limited conclusion. It is an assurance opinion, it is an assurance conclusion. It is positively worded, it is negatively worded. So no surprise if we see this question in the exam. Right? No surprise if we see this question. So that is SRE24 Zero, 0 and now coming to SRE 2410 what is SRE 2410 review of interim financial information performed by the independent auditor of the entity right so interim financial information performed by auditor so here the person doing the review can we call him as the auditor yes but 2400 we had to call him as the practitioner but here when can we call him as the auditor yes and what is interim shorter than the entity's financial year that is your june september december okay right so it says express a conclusion that is review conclusion mainly by inquiry analytical and other review procedures right so again not designed to obtain a reasonable assurance but what type of an assurance is given limited assurance again in this case do you need to issue an engagement letter Yes, engagement letter has to be issued. Understanding the entity and environment, including internal control. So when the independent auditor has to do the review, does he have to like, uh, 
like what they are talking about to be your okay now this auditor you know june september december example for interim financial information he is going to do the lr and then at the end of the year in the month of march he is going to do the audit so will he say okay, when i under do the audit that time i will understand the entity or when he does the review that time itself he has to understand the entity obviously when he does the review he has to start understanding the entity and its environment okay in 2400 they used to talk about the concept of likelihood of material misstatement here they have used a term called as potential material misstatement and a potential and the likelihood of the occurrence right so potential material misstatement so you do your risk assessment and once you do your risk assessment you have to respond and what is the response over here inquiry analytical and other review procedures right so it is like 315 330 but here what is in the inquiry put in the risk assessment you check for the potential material misstatement and then in the response you decide upon the inquiry analytical procedures okay here is it the auditor who is going to do the audit of financial statements who is doing the review Right? The auditor who has audited the audited financial statements, is he doing the review? Yes. So the auditor who has audited the financial statements of the entity is in relation to the preparation of financial statements that was sufficient to conduct the audit. So when he is understanding the entity for doing the audit, that same understanding can he use for the review? Yes, but what he needs to do, he needs to update his understanding. That means what? For 31st March 20. Two, already he's done the audit. So did he already understand the entity and its environment? Yes. Now for first quarter, 30th June 22, he is doing the review. So can he use this understanding of the entity which he already has? Last year he did audit. Now this year, first quarter, he is doing review. So can he use the knowledge of the entity which he already has? Yes, but now he needs to update his understanding. Right, he needs to update his understanding. And now, some of the procedures performed by the auditor to update the understanding and its environment are raised to 50. 50 times. You have to revise this. You have already understood the entity when doing the audit. Now you are doing the review. So it says you already know, but now you have to update your understanding. So now it says what are the procedures performed by the auditor to update the understanding of the entity and environment, including the internal control. Right, so how do you update? So one, it says read the documentation of the prior audit or prior year review. Right. Next, it says consider the significant risk, including the risk of management override of control. Very important term in audit. You know, as such, what do we say? The design, implementation and maintenance of internal controls in the organization. Whose responsibility? Management's responsibility. Now, what management is doing? They are ensuring that all the 10,000 employees who are working in the company, that they follow the controls. But what management is doing, they themselves are not following the controls in the organization. I always give an example that, you know, doctor is telling everybody, you should exercise, you should eat healthy food, you should exercise, you should take care of your health. But doctor is not eating healthy food, doctor is not exercising. And that is override of control. Right? So, if I have to pass an accounting entry, these are the steps that needs to be followed. But when management has to pass an accounting entry, they can override the controls in the organization and pass the bogus journal entry. And bogus journal entry, that means they are doing a fraud in the accounting. That means they are doing the fraudulent financial reporting. And a fraud. I know passing, like there is a, in SA 240, one of the types of fraud is fraudulent financial reporting and one of the way of doing fraudulent financial reporting is by management overriding the control and by overriding the control what does the management do they pass fictitious bogus journal entries into the books of account 
I know sitting, sitting, what to do? I didn't have any work. That is why I today wrote off all the assets, revalued the fixed assets of the company. You know, uh, all the I did to amalgamation entry to dividend entry. Ma'am, I wanted to try. I had never passed these entries. But bogus, fictitious, fake journal entries being passed. Okay, right? So management override of the control. Okay, management themselves are not following the controls in the organization. Right. So anyways, what we are talking about over here, you read the prior period documentation. Then you consider the SR, that is the significant risk, including the risk of MOC. Then read the most recent annual and comparable prior period interim financial information. So you read the documentation, you read the information interim financial information also then it says you also consider the materiality then consider the nature of any corrected material misstatement okay, last year audit review you had told management audit or review okay oh my god so much your inventory wrong valuation so they corrected it or you told management so much debtor accounting is wrong and they did not correct it so corrected and uncorrected Right? Corrected, we call corrected misstatement and uncorrected UCMS. So, CMS and UCMS. Corrected misstatements and uncorrected misstatement. Then, apart from misstatement, the material weakness in the internal control. Any weaknesses. Then, the results of any audit procedures performed with respect to the current year. Then, the result of any internal audit. Then, management assessment of risk. Any change in the entity's business activity. Any change in the internal control. And process which management is using for preparing the interim financial information. Right? So, last year audit review you have done. Now, this your first quarter or you know you have to do the review so how do you update your understanding of the entity and its environment so one you read the documentation and you read your interim financial information right to read it then what does it say you consider significant risk you consider materiality you consider risks you consider the materiality then you consider the material misstatement and the material weaknesses right so audit documentation, interim financial information. Then you consider the right, significant risk and also the materiality. Then you consider the material misstatement and the material weakness and the results of any audit procedure. The results of the audit procedure and the results of any internal audit. Right? Results of audit procedures and results of the internal audit. Then you inquire about change in business activity and change in internal control change in business internal or what you say change in business activity and change in internal control and last two points inquiry about results of management assessment and the process followed by the management right so how many points are there over there in total 12 points right so first two points you read the documentation you read the interim financial information then you consider the significant risk and the materiality then you consider the misstatements and the weaknesses you know, material misstatements and the weaknesses then you check into the change in business activity change in the internal control and then after that the results of audit procedure results of internal audit and the management's assessment and the management process right so updation of the Entity and its environment, right? Very specific question which would come in your exam, right? And then it says you perform the inquiry, analytical and the other review procedures, right? So you perform inquiry, analytical, other review procedure. Now, generally, what does it say? It does not require you to test the accounting records through inspection, observation or confirmation. As we already know, okay, out of the seven colors, which are the two colors selected? Inquiry and analytical so generally we don't use inspection observation or the confirmation but sometimes can it be required to be used yes generally it is limited to inquiry analytical procedures but sometimes you may also perform the other procedures then understanding the entity and environment risk assessment materiality needs to be considered and the procedures which are performed in the review are mainly the inquiry analytical but here though they say inquiry analytical what is the first point they are saying read the minutes of the meeting so they are telling you to do the inspection 
when you tell you consider the matter giving rise to the modification in the last year report right so matter giving rise to the modification so minutes and modification then you also communicate where appropriate with the other auditors that is branch auditors or so and then after that you make the inquiry right inquiry regarding what afrf accounting principle any new transactions any uncorrected misstatements unusual complex situations significant assumption related party commitment contingent liability debt covenant so if you remember our inquiry of 2400 SRE two four zero zero. Even that inquiry had the eight points, right? So similar eight points of inquiry in two four one zero also. You know, similar to inquiry of two four zero zero. We also have the inquiry of the two four one zero. It says you have to check the transactions in the last several days and the first several day cut off. In the last few days, generally maximum window dressing or fraud happens in the towards the end of the year or reversal of those transactions in the next year, right? So last several days and the first several days. Then any fraud allegations of fraud, non-compliance. That is again your two forty and two fifty, right? Two forty and two fifty, right? So one important question we saw: okay, how to update your understanding of the entity and its environment? Then you come to performing of this inquiry, analytical, and the other review procedures, right? So analytical procedure. Then read the interim financial state information, and when you are doing your review procedure, simultaneously could you also do your audit procedure? Okay, you know when you are checking it for the purpose of review, it says anyways I am do checking the debtor for review. At the same time, let me finish my audit part also. Yes. Right, it says may perform many of the review procedures before or simultaneously. Right, so earlier and audit procedures could be performed concurrently. You know, they could be performed concurrently. Okay, right. So that is regarding again the going concern, then the material adjustment, then evaluation of misstatements. That is your four fifty management representation. That is S A F I U. It take you need to obtain the written the presentations from the management. Accompanying information is nothing but your other information of S A seven twenty. You know, accompanying information is nothing but your other information of seven twenty. So once we study seven twenty, this will be easy to understand. And then it says you need to communicate right your findings and then the reporting right title address the opinion and so. Right, the most important part of our discussion in SRE two four one zero is regarding the updation of the understanding of the entity and the procedures, right, and the procedures. Okay.